the first thought that came to him was so redundant that it did no good whatsoever. Something wasn't right. The sad truth of the matter was that this situation was nothing new to Saito Kaiba. He was used to the confidence, used to the overwhelming sense of superiority. He had long since acclimated to this man's egotism. He had seen it in so many other people that it should have been boring. It should have been so commonplace that he could ignore it. But somehow, it wasn't. And he couldn't. Siegfried von Schroeder was too confident. And more to the point, Mokuba was too scared. There was something going on here that he didn't know. Something he didn't understand. It wasn't the gun pressed against Mokuba's back. That much he could guess. It was something else. Something underneath. Something said. Something done. Something wrong. Mokuba didn't answer Siegfried's prodding, but it didn't seem as though an answer was expected, or wanted. Or, Sato thought, he didn't answer vocally. The look on the boy's face was answer enough. It sent one message, as clear as any message he'd ever received. It said, don't let him, don't let him win, don't let him intimidate you, don't let him kill me. Well, you look cheerful. Were you planning a surprise party for me? You hate surprises. I hate a great many things. I doubt that, dear boy. You don't have the time. You're too busy to hate. Hate isn't only useless, Seto. It is destructive. It is distracting. It is expensive. You certainly would know. So, get on with it, Von Schroeder. Do what it is you've decided to do. I don't have much time. I have even less patience. Tell your misinformed brother why that likely isn't the best course of action for him right now. Or for you. N N Nisama. If that's the case, I have to wonder why you haven't done it already. If this was your reign from the beginning, you would have been better served in letting Sarawatari finish the job. Instead of... This. Seto, haven't we discussed this? I thought you told me already. I am not that efficient. And besides, why would I do that? Do you think me heartless? I think you're brainless. I wouldn't dream of doing such a thing. How'd it look if I let poor little Mokuba die without giving the chance to tell his beloved Nisama goodbye? About the same as you do right now, Von Schroeder. Pathetic. Mokuba bit his lower lip, closed his eyes, and shuddered. Seda would later think that his little brother had more courage in him than he, personally, would ever have. When the young Kaiba opened his eyes again, they were dry, clear, steady, heartbreaking. And people call me brave. Dear host in heaven, what kind of hell could draw that kind of control out of a ten-year-old boy? You're not letting this go... easily. It'll be quite easy. But first, I should like to catch up. It's been a long time, Seto. Won't you at least say hello? Hello. I don't have some ulterior motive, you know? I don't have any demands. I'm not here to negotiate with you or anything of that nature. I'm not going to challenge you to a duel. So asking to move it along will do none of us any good. So, you have a pistol pressed to my brother's back for kicks then? Beautiful. Tell me again why we never got along. Oh, so it's not for <laughs> kicks. I do have a purpose in mind. Do you not remember? You have already decided that I am seeking retribution. Vengeance, you called it. It is as good a motivation as any, I suppose. Seto's eyes narrowed. He seemed to be searching for something. Some sign, some telling twitch on his former rival's face. Some chink in his armor that would give him the opening he needed. Darren shifted slightly to the right, and Sato's eyes flickered in his direction and back again so fast that Darren would have missed it if he hadn't been looking directly at the young executive's face. Siegfried gave no indication that he had seen anything. Darren wondered vaguely about Joey Wheeler and Tristan Taylor. What were they doing? 
if they had managed to find anything, if they had any clue what was happening here. Grimacing, he tightened his hold on his pistol and readjusted his aim. <laughs> you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I wondered if you would say that. Such a common phrase. I'd hope that you might pick something a bit more colorful, but I suppose not. You want colorful? I'll give you the whole goddamn rainbow if you'd rather. I just don't want a chance Mokuba repeating any of it later. Ah, uh, well. Are you so sure you want to be that stringent? After all, circumstances allowing, dear Seto. Perhaps you could let the boy speak his mind for once. Whatever you're implying, say it clearly. I'm not interested in games, and you're not in much of a position to force me to play them. Nor are you in any position to force me to stop. You see, Seto, as I've already said, there isn't going to be any negotiation here. Both of us are, well, shall I say, backed into a corner. You know what I'm going to do, and I know what you are going to do. That is all. How long it takes us to perform these actions would likely be up to you. Siegfried would kill Mokuba. Sato would kill Siegfried. And then, in all likelihood, Sato would kill himself. Darren realized why Mokuba looked so frightened. Even though this wasn't his first, nor his second, nor even his third time being used as a target for revenge. This time was different, because this time, there was no way out. No chances, no games, no demands. Just a death sentence. Unless... Mokuba was beginning to shake. Tears were forming in the corners of his eyes. He was crying. Sato couldn't think. He couldn't gauge. Mokuba was crying? Damn it, how was he supposed to do this? How was he supposed to get Mokuba out of this? How was he supposed to win out this time? How the hell was he... He stopped. No, he had no time for this. He wasn't sure what path was open to him in order to save his brother, but the one thing he did know was that panicking was the one surefire, no-nonsense way to get the boy killed. You look like you understand now, old friend. Oh, I understand perfectly. Good, I'm glad. There'll be no confusion then. So, why restrict it on what your dear baby brother should be allowed to say? Surely now, of all times, rules and regulation and lessons and doctrine should not come into play? He can say whatever he likes. Do I look like I have a remote control that will stop him? He knows what I expect of him. If he decides to act outside of accordance with those expectations, that is his decision to make. Ah, but there. You see there? The underlying threat that says he'll be punished if he acts on that decision. That tone that says that Nisama won't love him anymore if he doesn't do as he's told. I trust that Mokuba is able to better analyze my tone than you are, Von Schroeder. Forgive me if I defer to his judgment on the matter. I do believe you would defer to little Mokuba's judgment on a great many matters. That much, I must admit. If I were to point out one thing in particular that is admirable about you, old friend, it would have to be your devotion to this most charming child. It's quite endearing, but you know... I must wonder if it'll be enough. Will devotion alone see you through this day? See both of you through this day? I must confess, I have my doubts. The hell are we supposed to do? There is nothing here. Kaiba and Soldier Boy are still in that front room, and I'm damn sure I heard somebody say, Nisama back there. We're here to help Mokuba, right? Why ain't we back there? Cause what good are we gonna do for him? You saw Kaiba with that gun. You know guns. Did he look like an amateur? No. And he's with a cop. Not some coffee and donuts rent a cop either. That guy's the real deal. You wanna tell me we're gonna actually help them? We're baggage, Triss. Best we can do is find the security system like they said, and hope we run into somebody stupid enough to stop us. Hey, maybe we'll run into Saruta What's-His-Name. Tristan wanted to look offended. But he had to admit that Joey had a point. Kaiba was clearly no stranger to a fight. 
He wasn't some pampered silver spoon prodigy who inherited his position. Over the years, it had become pretty clear that Kaiba had clawed his way to the top, with sweat in his eyes and blood in his hands and broken fingernails. And Darren McKinley, well, sometimes he looked no older than Tristan himself, and other times he looked older than Yugi's grandfather. Joey was right. He was the kind of cop that Tristan had spent most of his early teens avoiding, at all costs. The ones who knew how to use themselves as well as any gun or handcuffs. The ones who knew what they were doing. The ones who look right at home in the army. Small wonder why those two are friends. Well, well, more familiar faces. It's like a high school reunion. <laughs> so care to explain why you're trespassing on private property? I'm pretty sure nobody invited you in. I'm afraid I'm going to have to <laughs> ask you to leave. Joey had always been the ringleader. He and Tristan had been getting into fights for years, almost ever since they had met when they were 13 years old. And every time, Joey did the talking. Joey was by far the more assertive one. Tristan was the wingman, the backup, the sidekick. Saru Watari was tall and he was big and he was cocky as anyone Tristan had ever met. And to most anyone else, he would have cut an intimidating figure. His suit bulged as his gigantic muscles strained against it, which should have looked ridiculous, but somehow it didn't. His sunglasses were gleaming and almost glowing in the meager light of the hallway. His hair so painstakingly gelled that it looked set in concrete. You see, a buddy of ours is in this house, and we ain't leaving without him, so if you want us to leave, you're gonna have to force us. 